All right, everybody, today is looking at price ceilings and price floors. And what these are is it's where the market and the prices that make up the market are distorted by government policies. So when you hear things like uh, anti-price gouging laws or minimum wage or anything like that, really what those are, those are, are government policies that actually shift and distort kind of the natural price of goods and services. So, just a bit of a rehash. Markets naturally move towards equilibrium. This is where that supply line, where the demand line, where those two things intersect is the equilibrium point. So this point right here. This is where the market is naturally going to want to go. That's just, it's just natural. You, and the idea is, the I, well, the idea is no extra stuff lying around. So no extra products, no extra goods, no extra services that are not being used and no customers standing off the side going, I want some. So this is kind of, that's that sweet spot that all companies and all economies in general strive towards. But things happen. Somebody decides they want to mess with the economy. In essence, somebody wants to take control of the economy. They want to shift it and mold it and manipulate it in order to kind of suit that, in order to suit their needs, wants, desires, so on and so forth. So here's kind of what happens. And these are pretty much the two things. One, sellers are not happy. They're not happy because they want to make more money. Sometimes the buyers are not happy. And they want to pay less for stuff. Whenever these two things happen, things start happening within the economy. That, that kind of artificially manipulate it. And we call these things price controls. And the idea, and this is the rough definition of a price control, this is the legal limit on how high or low a price for a good or a service can go. So, and these price controls come in kind of two flavors. One, you have a price ceiling. What this sets is the legal maximum on a price that a good or service can be sold for. So like, for example, if it's, uh, you know, a mug, I got a mug right here. It says love on the side, gave it to my wife for Valentine's day. But, um, say the mug is $5. The government says you can only sell that mug for $5. I'd sell it for $5 and one cent. I go to jail for it. Um, the other thing is a price floor. This is the legal minimum, a price at which a good or service can be sold for. And the classic example to, for this is minimum wage. You have minimum wage laws. It is illegal for a company to pay somebody below minimum wage. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the one that most people are familiar with. So price ceilings, we don't really have these in the United States too much. When they usually do arrive, it's whenever there's a natural disaster, a crisis or a war, something big comes out of nowhere. And what a price ceiling does is it artificially keeps prices below the equilibrium price. So what that looks like, Whenever we have a hurricane, you know, live in Houston, Texas, we have hurricanes. One thing that always happens is you always have news reports and stuff like that that say, you know, this guy is arrested for price gouging. That's kind of where this usually comes up. When you hear talk of price gouging, you hear talks of, well, they need to lock the prices in place or the government already has laws to lock the prices in during natural disasters. And what it is, it's a price ceiling. They can't go higher than that, even if the situation calls for it. So, 
So, so yeah, market prices are deemed too high. The government can impose a price ceiling. So think about it this way, and this is kind of what happens. We have a hurricane. Water, wood, uh, you know, to board up your stuff. That's the demand for that skyrockets. And what happens? So like, so for example, this is kind of how this would play out long term. You have a demand line that starts maybe right here. They was minus one because it's kind of before. Bottles of water. Demand is right here. Hurricane comes through. Everybody starts buying up all the water. The demand line shifts to the left. Or I'm sorry, shifts to the right because, you know, demand increases. Hurricane is coming. Everybody's buying up water because, you know, the usual panic that sets in. And... It shifts right there. Now, what should naturally happen is as the demand for a good or a service goes up, the price of it goes up as well. So naturally, the price should rise. So yes, there should be selling water for $500 a case. Um, now, what happens is because people don't like it, oh my gosh, this person's selling a bottle, you know, bottle of water for 20 bucks. Governments, they impose a price ceiling, which means that even though, yes, the value of that water is $20 a bottle, it is illegal to sell it over $1.50. Simple example. And that is, in essence, what a price ceiling is. And kind of when and where those they come around. So what happens is the price ceiling comes in. We now find the market will supply queues, but don't have enough demand. So you have the supply. You have the demand. Demand will be greater than the possible supply. Okay? So that means because the price is set artificially low, and they cannot rise, people are just going to keep buying that product. So the market is now in disequilibrium. Demand is now greater than the supply. So more people will demand that product than can be supplied by the suppliers. And this is a binding ceiling, meaning the people, the businesses, stuff like that, they cannot raise their prices in order to meet the new demand. And so equilibrium is an impossibility. There is going to be shortages within the economy. And the price wants to push up, but it can't. Price ceiling blocks it. And then, um, so again, kind of think of it as trying to, the market is naturally going to be trying to push up to it, uh, push up through the ceiling to get to the peak, to get to where it needs to where it needs to go. So we have a shortage on that good. So this is why, again, when you went to like when Hurricane Harvey came through Houston, you went to the grocery store, all the water was cleared out. That's why the prices should have risen. From an economic standpoint, the prices should have risen. If the prices had risen, there still would have been bottles of, bottles of water left over. But because it was illegal to raise the prices, because price gouging laws, we had the all the shelves were cleaned out. So what do sellers do? Well, sellers aren't going to be happy. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a black market where sellers will be like, hey, you want to buy a bottle of water out of the back of the truck. And because all the legitimate sources of that bottle of water is gone, people start buying things out of the back of other people's vehicles. You have a gray market, which is a bit like a black market, just not as illegal. And kind of like a secondhand thing where people will like sell, hey, I'll sell you this half-used bottle of water type thing. Or, you know, some ABC gum. Um, already been chewed. So they'll sell less 
for the same price. So, for example, like the octane rating in gasoline, when there's, and this has happened before in the past, when prices, price for gasoline went up and it was government put in price controls, then eventually what happened was gas station places where, you know, they were sticking a hose where uh, the gasoline tanks were and turned on the water. So they start watering down the gas, those types of things. And then what can also happen is people, they can start charging for things that are normally used for free or for free is a better way of doing it. So this is kind of where you see with the airline market where once they had, uh, once upon a time, you could take your bags, you weren't charged $25 a bag. Well, because of, you know, because sellers could not sell the tickets because of gasoline prices and stuff like that. What happened was they, airlines were like, okay, well, you want to start throwing bags on the plane? $25 a bag. Or you have, you know, certain weight limits. And then they'll be like, you know, you have like, I think it's like 10 pounds a bag or something. I forget exactly. But you have like half a pound over. And then they're like, I'm sorry. Your bag's too big. That'll be $1,000. And then question becomes who gets the goods and what happens is first come first serve you get it you show up you get it good you don't show up in time sucks to be you that's kind of the first way second way is sellers choose they can set up a lottery um or you can have the government decide or like what happened during the uh, iranian oil embargo that happened during the jimmy carter administration license plates were used to determine who could get gasoline on what dates, um, what day of the week. So those are just some things that governments have done to try to regulate because you have a shortage of a product within an economy. Price floor is the opposite. A price floor in a gover- is when a government imposes a price that is above the prevailing market price. Um, and these are things like minimum wage, agricultural commodities, and these are very, very common for uh, price floor implementation. And again, we have uh, minimum wages in the United States. We have a few things for agricultural commodities. Um, there have been some people that have, or some countries that have posted uh, price floors for other things like car batteries and all sorts of stuff. If you can name it, there's been a price floor involving it in some country in the world, practically. And so what happens is you have the market is right there. It sets it right there. Market price is deemed too low because remember, there's an equilibrium point. I cannot write today, but there's the equilibrium point and it, government says is too low. The price of corn is too low. The price of my cashier job at mcdonald's is too low so so yeah so the government imposes it price floor so the recipient of that good or service the supplier will receive a higher price so think about this way when you get a job ultimately what are you doing you are selling yourself you're selling your time your labor your effort to do that job maybe your skill set isn't really that valuable. You know, how much skill does it take to flip a hamburger patty? This is a real economic discussion. How much skill does it take to, you know, flip a spatula? Is it worth $15 an hour? Is it worth $8 an hour? Is it worth $2 an hour? That's the question. And so you have things that the government says, hey, this is too cheap. Raise it up. That's in essence what a price floor is. So you got the price floor. And, you know, as the price of P in the mark, you have disequilibrium. Quantity demanded will be less than the quantity supplied. So you're going to have more demand, less supply. And the market will be trying to push down. Um, but again, by new floor price price is not going to allow that government law 
will not allow people to go below. So, you know, say for example, say minimum wage is $10. Just be arbitrary. Minimum wage is $10. Somebody says, I don't care if it's minimum wage is $10. You can hire me for nine. Illegal. And so, so yeah, you have market pressing down, but it cannot go past that line. So what you end up with is a surplus. You have disequilibrium, quantity demanded is less than what can be, what will be supplied. So you will have a surplus of that good or service in the market. So you're going to have things left over. So minimum wage, for example. You have minimum wage, it's a price floor. What does this mean? You have surplus workers. You have people who cannot get jobs because of the price floor. So that's just an economic reality. Wherever you stand on that issue, that's just an economic reality. Um, so another example is you know agricultural com commodity. Farmers you know, tend to overproduce. The federal government will buy the extra and either use it as stockpiles, give it off as foreign aid. And it's because, again, even in the United States, we have, you know, certain laws on the books that say that a, you know, ear of corn cannot be sold below a certain price. So technically, you know, for ones up for price floors, yeah, you could probably go to a grocery store and get like a bag of corn for 50 cents. But because of the price floors, you have that situation. The prices are higher. So we have extra. So we shove it in our gas tank now to make ethanol. And again, going back to the minimum wage, you have a surplus of labor, which means you have higher unemployment. Than what would normally be there without the price floor because again look at it from the perspective of the business the business has to look at somebody and go is it worth hiring you me paying you fifteen dollars just to flip hamburgers probably not so what they will do is they won't hire that one person for like maybe three bucks he won't get a job. And they'll just give that job, they'll just give that other job to somebody that's already a cash register, sweeping the floors, cleaning the toilets, doing everything else. So the bottom line, what price ceilings, price floors do? They distort the market price for a good or a service. Now, usually these are imposed for a political reason and not actually based on economic reality. I forgot to add not. Not actually based on an economic reality. So when you have these price controls that are put in place, from a societal standpoint, it's easy to see the winners. Not as easy to see the losers because like for example minimum wage you will hear stories about oh this person you know they made they you know the minimum wage raised they have a job you know they have more money they can you know afford to upgrade to the good ramen or that kind of stuff one thing that is you don't really see are the people who are never hired from the get-go because of the minimum wage so or like, for example, with uh, price ceilings. You don't, you see the people going, okay, yes, I was able to get my water. I wasn't price gouged because hurricane. You don't see, you see that. What you don't see are the people that were not able to get water anyway. Maybe they could have afforded the $20 gallon, you know, $20 bottle of water. But they weren't able to get it from the anyway because the you know the price ceiling artificially lowered it. Because like for example, like when Harvey came, I remember I was standing in the grocery store 
Um, I already got my water before that. I just went to the grocery store because I wanted cookies and I wanted to laugh at the people. And so I was just standing there in the grocery store with my bag of Chips Ahoy cookies, the chewy kind. And I was just watching. I saw, you know, one lady riding down the thing in her little motorized cart. She had three things of water in her basket. And then I saw the other people that would show up and they like they would go by where the water was and you would see like ah oh, all the water's gone and then they would walk off so so again those are kind of the things how these play out in reality so this is you know government policy that does have a impact on what happens within the economy for individuals for companies for anything and we'll just leave it right there Peace out. Oops.